So the question becomes, are we getting our world peace money's worth? Because over the years, we've employed many different costly international agreement enforcing measures. We've tried the bomb and leave methodology. It's a bit of an ordinance sampler that says we care, but not enough for boots on the ground that I know about. <laughs> Does it work? Well, it's more cost effective, but it's, pardon the phrase, hit or miss. And then, of course, we offer countries the platinum package, the bomb and stay, your Koreas, <laughs> your Vietnams, your Afghanistans, your Iraqs. You may ask yourself, why do we have to stay so long in those places? Well, it turns out that when you bomb the shit out of a place, the instability you create needs to be managed. For instance, when we took out Saddam Hussein, the craziest thing happened. ISIS originated with Al-Qaeda in Iraq going back to 2005, 6, 7. We had to stay there to deal with the ISIS threat, which we caused by taking out Saddam. It totally worked. ISIS has spread far beyond its strongholds in Syria and Iraq. In fact, U.S. military officials tell NBC News they worry about the growing signs of ISIS presence in a half dozen other places. You see, sometimes a side effect of spreading democracy is accidentally spreading ISIS and a, a refugee crisis. Moving on. Maybe you're looking for more of a refresher package without all that collateral damage, in which case America will teach you how to bomb. We offer military training to nascent democratic republics looking to shore up those aspirations. We do that a lot. And while that occasionally does lead to newly trained militaries overthrowing those nascent democracies, you gotta risk it to get the biscuit. <laughs> and then there's just the straight fucking coups. Have we ever tried to meddle in other countries' elections? Oh, probably. But uh, <laughs> it was for the good of the system in order to avoid the uh, communists from no. taking over. We don't do CIA. that now, though. We don't mess around other people's well, elections, Joe. Mm, nom, 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 nom. <laughs> she asked you if we do coups, and your response was the same as you get when you're lapping up soft ice cream. <laughs> Are we overthrowing leaders? <laughs> the point is, being the world's policeman is a big job because the world is a very dangerous place filled with many dangerous weapons. And here's where it gets tricky. We are also the world's largest weapons dealer. While we are personally enforcing global security agreements, we are also seeding the world with global chaos starter kits. And while occasionally two of the countries we sell weapons to end up fighting each other or use those weapons to commit war crimes, we are very careful with what happens to these precious weapons. Courtesy of Uncle Sam, American supplied armor, now riding under Taliban colors. The spoils of victory being paraded by the new masters of Kandahar. Did we do that? <laughs> by the way, Masters of Kandahar is the worst reality show I've ever seen. <laughs> I am starting to wonder if the anchor of global security might be attached to a sinking ship. Since 1945, our mostly chasing our tail military strategy has been everything, everywhere, all at once. <laughs> That's super fucking creepy, that graphic. <laughs> and, well, 